In the headlines, more than 200 energy experts from Korea and around the world gather in Seoul to discuss new investment opportunities in the renewable energy sector. Samsung Electronics unpacks new smart gadgets, including Galaxy Note 4 and Note Edge, just a few days before its arch rival Apple unveils its iPhone 6. And the NATO summit, considered to be the most important gathering of its leaders in more than a decade, kicks off with a host of pressing issues from the crisis in Ukraine to ISIS militant threats in Iraq and Syria. Hello and welcome to Primetime News, live from Seoul. I am Kang Tedi. And I'm Sean Lim. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. NATO leaders have convened in Wales for what's being referred to as the most important gathering in more than a decade. And they're there to address critical issues, including the Ukraine crisis and the growing threat of the Islamic State. And uh, their top objective is to reassure allies in Eastern Europe to stand ready to defend against any possible aggression. Arirang's Lee ji has more. Following a phone call with Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko on Wednesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin unveiled a seven-point ceasefire plan to end the bloody conflict in eastern Ukraine. Stating his views on the conflict were very similar to those of Poroshenko, Putin said the plan included a halt to separatist fire, a pullback of Ukrainian forces, an end to airstrikes and the establishment of a humanitarian aid passage. Poroshenko, for his part, said he and Putin shared a mutual understanding on steps to ensure peace in the region, adding that he expected a substantive dialogue on reconciliation to take place during talks in Minsk on Friday. However, Ukrainian Prime Minister Artsenyi Yatsenyuk dismissed the ceasefire plan, saying it was an attempt to deceive the West about Moscow's real intentions. With growing skepticism, France has also expressed its disapproval by delaying the delivery of two naval assault ships to Russia. The UN says more than one million people have been uprooted from their homes and many more may follow, as it doesn't look like the dark clouds of war will lift anytime soon. Lee ji Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye carried on with her deregulation drive on this Thursday, uh, calling for an elimination of regulations that hinder individuals for, from participating in the generation and sales of energy. At an international forum on renewable energy in Seoul, President Park said having individuals and communities create energy markets of their own through use of IT devices could help save social expenses and foster new energy-related industries. The Korean government has been promoting new investment opportunities in the renewable energy sector in the process of tackling climate change. The president also stressed the need for the government to ease investors' concerns about the risk of innovation and establish a Korean energy export model to meet global demands. Samsung Electronics has unveiled four new smart gadgets, including the Galaxy Note 4 in Berlin. Uh, initial reactions seem to be positive at this point, but Apple is uh, coming up with an event of its own scheduled for next week. Park Jiwon has more. Samsung Electronics has pulled the curtain back on four new models, including its new flagship, the Galaxy Note 4. It comes with a 5.7-inch Super AMOLED display and a 16-megapixel camera with an optical image stabilization function. And unlike its predecessor, the Galaxy Note 3, the new version features a sleek metal frame design. The Galaxy Note 4 will continue to set industry standard for how smartphones should help our lives become more enriched, more enjoyable, and the more efficient. Another new phone, the Galaxy Note Edge, is also catching the attention of industry insiders, namely for having a display screen that extends to the right edge of the phone, which can be used to show a scrollable panel of information. 
For me, the most um, curious thing is Galaxy Edge because I heard some rumors, but it was years ago. It was the most um, 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 the best uh, device for me. Samsung also unveiled a virtual reality headset and its new Gear S smartwatch model in Berlin. But there's also going to be an element of this market that's open to people that have a big stake in mobile gaming that want to expand, expand and extend that experience in new ways. And I think Samsung's smart to get into this. And they certainly, among the mobile phone vendors, will have that space to themselves for at least a while. The releases come one week before Apple is expected to show off its iPhone 6 to the world. The speculation is that it will have a larger screen, similar in size to Samsung phones, and maintain the two rivals' heated competition in the global market. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Citing recent economic indicators, Korea's finance minister warned last week that the country had entered the early stages of deflation. But some experts disagree, saying the economy could be actually picking up. Our Hwang Jie has more on the two sides. Korea's inflation rate has remained below the 2% level for nearly two years. The latest consumer price index has also pointed to a slowdown from a recent pickup. The index rose at its slowest pace in four months, rising 1.4% in August from a year ago. That also falls far below the central bank's inflation target band of 25 to 3.5%. But many experts say the domestic economy running a low inflation rate does not mean it's headed for deflation. When we say deflation, it means a minus inflation rate is continuing for such a prolonged period of time that people's expected inflation rate also turns to minus. So it's too early to talk about deflation. They add that the focus should be on the nation's core inflation rate, which excludes volatile food and energy prices. And that index actually grew at the fastest pace in two and a half years last month at 2.4 percent. Experts say Finance Minister Choi kyung hwan had political reasons for raising concerns about deflation. There is a lot of fiscal policy that the government wants to uh, engage in. For example, changes in the welfare policy, uh, measures to uh, try to invigorate some new industries. But that's all being uh, held in status at the National Assembly. So I think this was his way to try to shock the National Assembly into moving on some of these uh, issues. Che's comments also pressured the Bank of Korea to further lower its key interest rate with this month's monetary policy meeting just around the corner. But as concerns linger over the nation's mounting household debt problem, experts say it's likely the central bank will hold off a rate cut this month. The bank lowered the key rate to 2.25 percent in August, the first rate cut since May last year. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Seoul and Washington will establish a combined division of their troops next year with the task of carrying out wartime operations. South Korea's defense ministry says if formed, the unit would be a first of its kind around the world. It will be set up in the first half of next year and be headed by a major general level U.S. officer. Details on the new unit's missions aren't available, but officials say at wartime it will carry out special operations such as eliminating weapons of mass destruction and civil missions against North Korea. Your gateway to the day's biggest stories in Korea and around the world. Breaking news, the hottest interviews, and a whole lot more. Join Arirang Sean Lim and Kang Chedi from the heart of Seoul. News begins now. Primetime News, weeknights, live at 10 on Arirang TV. Cigarette prices have remained steady at around $2.50 uh, since 2008 here in Korea. That may soon change if the government has its way as it's trying to lower Korea's high smoking rate. Shin Se-min tells us more. Smokers in Korea will soon have to pay an extra two U.S. dollars for a pack of cigarettes. 
This as the government and the ruling Tenori party have come to an agreement on raising cigarette prices in a bid to reduce the nation's current smoking rate. The change is nothing more than a proposal right now, but smokers are already looking ahead. It is working as a motivating factor for me. I think I'll finally quit once the price goes up, both because of my health and the economic burden. It's a burden. I don't think I'll be able to maintain the amount I smoke once the price goes up. It's just too much. The 80 percent price hike on a pack of cigarettes would narrow the gap between Korea and the OECD average, which is $6.40. More than 37 percent of Korean males over the age of 15 currently smoke. That's the second highest rate among OECD member nations behind only Greece. The low cost of cigarettes in Korea has been pinpointed as a major reason for the high smoking rate. Making them more expensive, experts say, will have an effect particularly on younger Koreans who are not economically independent. A quarter of high school students admit to having used tobacco at least once in their lives. Studies show that raising the price of cigarettes also has an effect on people who are economically independent. The consensus among global researchers is that a 10 percent increase in the price of cigarettes results in a 3 to 5 percent reduction in the smoking rate. The government says it's still fine-tuning the details of the plan, but the price hike will almost certainly happen in stages as a sudden increase will likely be met with blacklash by smokers. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Talk to any foreigner who has lived in Korea for any extended period of time and they will tell you that shopping online can be a complicated and frustrating ordeal. But relief could be on the way as the Korean government is working toward changes to simplify that process. Yudian has the details. In 2008, the personal information of about 10 million people is leaked from an online shopping mall. Another 20 million customers fall victim in 2009 and 2010 when a total of 25 online shopping malls are hacked into. And since Koreans are required to provide their social security numbers, birth dates and other personal info to sign up for a membership, all of it is exposed. Foreigners don't have the same problem because they don't have Korean social security numbers, but that presents another issue for them, as they're unable to shop online without such a number. To combat data leaks and increase the accessibility to online shopping malls for foreigners, the government has decided to do away with a number of measures by the first half of next year. Providing social security numbers will no longer be a requirement for Koreans when making purchases online, and foreigners will be able to purchase goods by verifying their identity through credit cards. We are going to devise new regulations for core growth areas like e-commerce. To do so, we are going to set up a panel of people from different fields of expertise. By breaking down the barriers to online shopping for foreigners, the government expects exports in the sector to increase to 300 billion U.S. dollars by 2017, up from about 24 million last year. Yurian, Arirang News. Today is Taekwondo Day here in Korea, adding some extra meaning to the day. The world's largest Taekwondo Center opened in the southern city of Muju, offering a variety of programs for people of all ages. Our Kim Hyun Bin takes us to the opening. Korea is the birthplace of one of the most well-known forms of martial arts, Taekwondo. So it seems only right that Korea had the largest Taekwondo Center. The opening ceremony for this new facility in Muju, Cholabukdo province, in Korea's southwest, was held on Thursday. Over 2,500 visitors and distinguished guests, including Prime Minister Chong Hong Won and other top government officials, attended the ceremony. Highlighting the government's efforts to make the facility a global Taekwondo mecca, 200 masters of the martial art from 16 countries were given medals for their efforts to globalize the sport. We established the Taekwondo Center to globalize the sport and make this center a mecca. To fulfill our goal, we will offer a variety of Taekwondo programs and help globalize it through international exchange. Local residents are also proud to see such an amazing center of sporting excellence set up in the heart of their community. 
As a Muju resident, I am pleased to see the opening of the Taekwondo Center. The center was established and represents Muju, the Republic of Korea, and will be a good chance to promote the sport around the globe. The world's largest Taekwondo Center is built on over 2.3 million square meters of land, 10 times the size of Seoul World Cup Stadium, and is capable of accommodating 1,400 people at once. The center also has interactive facilities where visitors and pro athletes can hone their Taekwondo skills. Visitors can enhance their basic Taekwondo skills through numerous interactive activities and also get to spar against virtual reality fighters. At a cost of 240 million U.S. dollars, the center also includes the world's largest Taekwondo arena, a museum, an experience hall, and many other points of interest. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News, Muju. The Korean DMZ is a popular spot for tourists who want a glimpse across the border at North Korea. It's also an area fraught with emotional history, but as our Immuni reports, where there are emotions, there is the potential for art. An area of Korea littered with remnants of the Korean War. On the fringe of the 38th parallel north, you wouldn't expect to find much at the Korean demilitarized zone, except for maybe skeletons of the destruction that divided a nation. So what would a collection of art be doing in an area like this? Argentinian artist Adrian Villarrojas shows that the Korean DMZ is in fact a fitting place for artistic inspiration, and he responds with a collection of art. I absolutely fell in love with the place, and I had this like sort of ambitious idea of use the town as a theater, as a and as a huge studio. And he's not the only artist to do so. Cellist Dio Kyung fills the air with her music, an unexpected venue for the beautiful notes of the classical instrument. And artist Tomas Araceno's works includes a beautiful scene of the mountains of Korea, even including peaks from North Korea, titled Degrees of Freedom. The binocular telescope captures a 360-degree view and the sentiments of many. These are just a few of the artists who are part of this year's Real DMZ project, a contemporary art project based on research conducted on the DMZ that brings a unique perspective of artists from all over the world. And this is uh, fascinating for me to try an exhibition that explores the field between politics and the art. It's a project that experiments with unique productions and exhibitions and aims to bring awareness to the real DMZ. Immune Hee, Arirang News. In an unexpected move, the European Central Bank has cut its benchmark uh, key rate to new record lows to spur growth and prevent uh, the Eurozone economy from slipping back into recession. For this and other international headlines, we turn to Son Jung in at the News Center. So, how much did the ECB slash its rate? Well, the ECB lowered its main interest rate to 0.05 percent. The move comes as the bank has been under pressure to kickstart the Eurozone economy. Experts say this may work as a way to try and lift inflation from rock bottom levels. Earlier in June, the ECB had cut its rate to 0.15 percent from 0.25 percent. The move comes three months after a historic package of stimulus measures and two weeks after ECB President Mario Draghi signaled he was ready to act again. After the brutal killing of two American journalists by Islamic State militants, the United States is fighting back, saying it's prepared to, quote, degrade and destroy the group's capabilities in order to contain them. 
Following the statement from U.S. President Barack Obama, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel outlined the dangers posed by the terror group. In an interview with CNN, Hagel called IES, quote, something we have never seen before, and added his job as Secretary of Defense is not to second guess what may be or what is going to be. Pointing out that Islamic State controls half of Iraq and Syria today, the U.S. defense chief said Washington will do everything possible to destroy the group's cap capacity to inflict harm on the American people and U.S. interests. And Malaysia Airlines is drawing attention again, this time for launching an online contest on Monday that offered prizes to winners who came up with the best suggestions for bucket list adventures. The airline quickly pulled the contest a day later after it drew a barrage of criticism from the public over the title of the competition. It was called My Ultimate Bucket List Campaign. The term bucket list refers to things a person wants to do before dying. The public claimed it was an inappropriate term to use, especially following the two deadly disasters the airline suffered this year. Malaysia Airlines issued a statement on Wednesday saying it appreciates and respects the sentiments of the people and in no way did it intend to offend any parties. And that wraps up our look at international stories uh, making headlines around the world. I'll see you back here tomorrow evening. Hello and welcome to sports. Now starting with football, a week of international friendly matches kicked off across the globe and that included the anticipated rematch of World Cup finalists Germany and Argentina. This time the World Cup champions had the home crowd behind them in Dusseldorf while the Albi Celeste was without main man Lionel Messi who's nursing an injury. And step in Angel Di Maria, the fleet-footed Argentine, assisted two goals in the first half and another in the second, all before adding a goal of his own. And Germany answered back with two, but Argentina won this one 4-2. to two. And staying overseas, this time to the FIBA World Cup. South Korea has dug itself a hole, losing its fourth straight game and likely won't make it out. Dropping to Lithuania by a massive 30 points, 49 to 79. South Korea is now 0-4 in Group D. And chances of reaching the knockout rounds are slim to none, barring a miracle. They'll face Mexico in their final group stage match later at 12.30 a.m. Korea time. And over to New York City for U.S. Open tennis. Let's get to the men's and women's quarterfinals action on day 10. For the man, Novak Djokovic took four sets to beat Andy Murray in the marquee matchup, while Kai Nishikori upset Stan Wawrinka to become the first Japanese player to reach the semis there in 96 years. Now for the ladies, world number one Serena Williams coasted past Flavia Panetta of Italy in straight sets, while Ekaterina Makarova took down Victoria Azarenka. Those two women will meet in the semis. And coming back to Korea, let's get to Thursday's top KBO matchup between the Seoul rivals, the Tucson Bears, and the LG Twins. And now it's Tucson's Dustin Nipper taking on LG's Woo Min. And they both cruise until the top of the fourth when Ojiwon crushes the first pitch for a home run. And two runners come in later, LG's up 3-0. Then sixth inning, Jorge Cantu comes in off the third baseman's error for Tucson's first run. And then in the seventh, Kantu comes home again to make it close. Then top of the ninth, Kim Yeonsu hits a solo shot to tie it all up. And right now it's 3-3 in the top of the tenth inning. And looking at the other games, Samsung beats Hanma 4-0. Lotte takes down SK 6-4. And finally, Nexon crushes NC 13-5. And finally, two-time Olympic champion, or wrestling champion rather, Shim Guan Ho will become the first Korean, and Asian for that matter, to be inducted into the International Federation of Associated Wrestling Styles, or FILA, Hall of Fame. 
Shim rose to prominence in the sport, winning back-to-back -back gold medals in the 1996 and 2000 Olympic Games, all while sweeping golds at the World's Asian Games and Asian Championships. He's among 16 wrestlers to receive the high honor. And that wraps it up for now. This has been Stephen Chet. Next up, your weather updates. Hope your day is coming along well. I'm Kim Bo Kyung with your weather updates. It was an autumn-like day here in Korea, warm with sunny skies nationwide. But parts of Gyeongsangnam-do province have a chance of getting 5 to 20 millimeters of precipitation due to instability in the atmosphere. Well, tomorrow is everyone's favorite day of the week, Friday, and the weather looks to be absolutely bright and clear. So if you can, make time to head outdoors for a nice stroll. But when doing so, make sure to grab a light cardigan because there will be a big gap in temperatures of about 10 degrees between the day and night. Well, the weather looks to be on our side over the Chuseok holiday period, and we should be able to enjoy the second brightest moon of the year so far on Chuseok Day. Moving on to Friday's readings, Seoul, Gwangju, and Busan reached 30 degrees, Daegu to 32. On to other places, Jeju and Dokdo make it to 27, Mount Kumgang to 30. That's all for now, but I'll be back with more updates after midnight. See you then. And that's uh, primetime news for this Thursday. And I'm Kang Chidi. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sean Lim, and I'll see you at midnight for Late Night Edition. Goodbye.